Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to have a look around the Boss Tone Studio software for Katana. Uh, hopefully you've got it all installed and you've got your Katana connected up and you've installed also the patch that I've got there called Clean Start because it's what I'm going to be using to explain a lot of these things if you want to play and explore along. First little part of this video though is going to be just kind of navigation and explaining out what the different parts are of the actual software itself. So starting over on the left hand side we've got a, well, a boss logo underneath that we've got news which I think if I click on it uh, I need to update the user manual. I'm not going to bother with doing that right now. Underneath that you've got two buttons the editor and the librarian. Now the librarian is where you'll store all your sound. It's a little bit sparse on mine at the moment because I've mostly been working on my other computer, my studio computer and I'm working on my laptop now so this has just got a few on there, but you can see that uh, the, the, the big uh, columns are what they call a live set where you can put a whole bunch of different sounds in each one of those to help you organize them and each one of those things is a sound there. Now uh, if we go back to editor that's giving you the all of the different available options and most of the time if you're editing sounds you'll be in the editor. Fairly uh, obvious that one. Now underneath that you'll see there's a, a, the top thing that says panel. Now panel is actually showing you the knobs as they are exactly on your katana that's plugged in at that moment. Okay, so uh, if I click on that now, it shouldn't be too different. It's a little bit different, uh, but not particularly. Um, and if you move any of the knobs on your amplifier, the, 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 the knobs will reflect that right now. So if I just go over and I start tweaking the gain control on, on the amplifier itself, you can see that that knob is moving around there as well. So that's a, a direct representation. I guess the one or the things that are different about it is it doesn't have a master volume. Um, I've been always running my katana with the master volume flat out and then I'm just using the volume to control the volume uh, or possibly the, the output selector to cut it from 50 to 25 uh, watts or I can't remember the smaller increment. Um, but uh, you can use that to adjust the volume. It does seem to sound better that way. Um, but you need to experiment and see you know, how your taste is. But that's how I've been running mine. Uh, and the Tone Studio also has a presence control on the far right of the top, which isn't uh, uh, actually on my amplifier there. So uh, that's the only differences really between the, the knobs there uh, that exist on the Tone Studio and what you get on your actual amplifier. So directly underneath that, we get our first of the patches. So if I'm just gonna click on this now, it's called, uh, I've got this one installed here, J Guitar Clean Start. Now there's four different patches that you can load into your Katana at any time and access without having to work on the Tone Studio. So that's really where you wanna store your four favorite patches. Okay, so as you go through and you find different patches that you like more and more, you want to add them in there from the library and, um, you know, so that the app, so you don't have to use the, the, the Tone Studio when you're just having a jam or playing around, you know, you don't need it plugged in all the time. I think it's pretty cool and there's some amazing features that you might want to tweak while you're playing, but, you know, most times when you're doing your practice, you probably don't want to be plugged into a laptop that way. So uh, if we go over to the top here, most of the controls I've already talked about in the in the kind of intro uh, demo talk about the Katana amplifier, but I'll run through them again very quickly. The first one, the amp type, you've got brown sound, which is this kind of Van Halen-y, very cool, oversaturated distortion sound. Lead sound, very, very dirty sound. Crunch, little bit dirty sound, but not somewhere between a clean and a dirty sound. A crunch is a nice kind of a bluesy sort of a, a tone. You've got clean, which is what I'm set on right now, and acoustic, which is obviously designed for acoustic guitars. Um, you can still use all of the effects, of course, uh, on an acoustic guitar if you've got an electroacoustic or an acoustic with a um, with a pickup of some sort. Um, moving along for that amplifier section, you've got the gain there, which is going to be how much crunch you have. So even on a clean sound, if you really ramp the gain up, you, it will start to kind of break up a little bit. Uh, and you've also got volume, uh, which is how loud it's going to be, especially if you've got your master volume cranked right up, then that control is going to be pretty important. Um, Next, we've got the equalizer section. We've got bass, metal, middle, and treble. Uh, having those three modes, that is, you know, essentially what you have. Bass, middle, and treble. Low sounds are the bass sounds. The middle is the amount of honk, and the treble is the top, or the bright sort of sounds that you get. Um, they can have a really drastic effect on the sound of your guitar, so it's definitely something that you want to explore on your own. I will be doing some lessons explaining more about EQ, but the best way of learning that kind of stuff is just to play and move each of the knobs all the way up and all the way down. It should be fairly obvious uh, if you do that what the effect is of each of those controls. And now we get onto a slightly more complicated area, the effects area. And you'll see there that we've got a button at the top, we've got a little um, 
a space where uh, on on the first knob on my particular one here it says off uh, and then underneath there's a knob now there's three effect slots okay so in this first slot you can have either booster or modulation effects one of those two you can't have both of them at the same time one of those ones uh, at the moment the knob is set to off if i move it so that the little pointer within the knob is on the uh, left hand side that's turning on the booster effect and if i move it over to the right hand side there it'll take it over into the modulation effect and you can kind of see down the bottom there if you look underneath where it says booster and modulation in that first kind of block underneath there you can see right now it's showing the green blues driver if i move it around to the other side it, it moves it over into tiwa or touchwa um, the, what exactly that knob controls is different depending on the different effects but you need to understand that you've got that slot there where you can either have a booster effect or a modulation effect okay it's the same with the second one we have delay or fx okay so again if the the, the knob is all of the way uh, counterclock uh, yeah counterclockwise the effect will be off any further up than that on the left hand side is going to be a delay effect and if you get it over to the other side it's going to be a different effect that you can choose from the menus below the third one is just reverb it's, it can be reverb and delay um, depending on what settings that you've got that we talk about later on but it's basically the amount of reverb that you've got there um, it's a very uh, comprehensive and uh, somewhat it, feel, it can feel a bit complicated when you first have a go at it. it it's not complicated. It's just going to take you a little while to, to get the logic of it figured out. But it's a very, very powerful little tool, this, you know, and especially when it's used in conjunction with the tone studio. You've really got a lot of tones that you can explore there. Um, further on the right hand side, you've got there a presence control. That's presence is like a, a higher than treble sort of effect. A very, very bright, adds a bit of crispness to the sound. Uh, you don't want to go crazy with the presence and run it too high, or it'll get really, really sharp and brittle sounding. But it's uh, again, the best way to explore how a presence works is to turn it all of the way up, turn it all of the way down. We'll be doing that more when we specifically look at tone controls and how to use them uh, on the amplifier. To, you know, this session today is just literally an overview. Now, I didn't explain with the effects what the different colors mean. Okay, and this is a little bit that's kind of interesting. So if I move this knob now over to the left hand side you'll see there's a little green light on the button above okay and that's corresponding to here it says booster and there's a green light there where it says i've got it selected at the moment as blues driver or blues driver i think is this, all the text that i get on the screen okay so that's a particular type of booster again we're going to go through lessons on what the different boost types are but that one's saying that i'm using the boost uh the, the blues driver sound as the boost but if I click that little, uh, the button with the green light on it again, it'll change to red. And you'll see that now the red light is selected underneath booster, which is showing that it's now overdrive, okay? There's a, a whole bunch of different things that I can choose from, but I've selected the overdrive there. And if I click that button one more time, it turns yellow, and then we've got distortion lights up there. You can hear, I'm not sure if I'll leave the amp sound on, but a whole heap of hiss has just come out the amp because I've got a lot of gain set on that. So. One of the things that you've got to suss out is not only are you choosing between booster and mod, uh, like modulation, you've got three different effects that you can preset in there and change the, the parameters of on each side. And you can change between them just by pressing that knob. Again, if I go now over onto the right hand side into the modulation part, you can see the green is lit at the moment for Tiwa, Tachwa. If I click that knob again, it'll turn red. And now we've got the flanger sound. If I touch it again, it's going down into the phaser sound, okay, which is now the orange light. And exactly the same works on this second button for the effects. On the uh, left hand side, we've got I've got the three settings as tape echo, analog, and SDE 3000. So we can change those by clicking that button. Exactly, you can do it on the actual button on the amplifier, or you can do it in the tone studio. I was finding a bit frustrating that I couldn't click in the actual. Uh, bit down the bottom I wanted to click next to tape echo and make that one work but it doesn't work like that you have to be using that knob the the the, the button rather underneath the uh, underneath the effects section um, now again we can flip it over to the other side to the right hand side of the de delay effects 
The effects that I've got set there are Univibe, Tremolo and Octave. And again, I can just, by pressing that button, I can scroll between the green, the red, and the yellow selector. So that's really important that you've got that. For the reverb, we've got again, uh, the three different selectors. We don't have to worry about either side this time. There's just the one knob for the amount of reverb, uh, but we can again change it between green, red, and yellow and have different settings there. But what's important is that you, the mode can change between delay, delay and reverb, or just reverb. Now I've got them all set to reverb because one of the things I'd like you to experiment with is listening to the difference between plate reverb, spring reverb, and hall reverb, just so that you can understand a bit about the different types of reverb. If you want the analog, uh, if you want the delay to start working, you need to change that uh, setting uh, underneath mode from reverb to either delay and reverb, or just to delay, and that'll control which one of those things are working. We will be going over all of these things in much more detail. I just wanted to give you an overview of what's going on there. Now, uh, in between this lower section and the top part, which is showing what is actually on the uh, amplifier itself, we've got another series of menus to choose from. The first one is effects. That's what the one I left it on for now. The second one of those is the signal chain. Now, I again, I'm going to do a more detailed lesson on this, but it basically gives you some different options of the order of the effects. The next one, the booster, this is where we can fine tune each one of those sounds. So not only can we select the blues driver as the green option in our booster settings, but we can edit the drive, the tone, the bottom end, the effects level, uh, whether it's operated by a foot switch or not, which I don't think works for this amplifier, but the I think the 100 watt, the, the, the Katana 100 has a foot switch that goes with it. I'm not using that for this one. But this is where we can get really start fine tuning the selections we've got. Here's the modulation effects and again, it'll be different for each different effect. The, the parameters, the things that you can adjust will be different for each effect. There's your delay, there's your effects, and again where that uni V is, if I click on that, that's where you can start to see the incredible amount of effects that you've got within each of these slots. So it's, it, there's really a, an awful lot to explore. Delay 2 is the type of delay that we would get mixing in with the reverb on that slot 3, effect slot 3, the far right effect. Uh, the same with the reverb, so the delay 2 and the reverb are the ones that are controlled by uh, slot 3. Now we've also got another three things which are very, very powerful. The first one is the EQ. Now, I already mentioned that EQ can make a big difference to the overall sound. Well, the EQ here, especially having a low mid and being able to control exactly the frequency band of the low mid and the upper mid, is really, really powerful. This is an incredible part of this amplifier or this the, the, the tone studio part of this amplifier. It's a really big deal. We've also got here this uh, noise suppressor. I don't use the noise suppressor. It's kind of useful if you've got loads and loads of distortion on, but I, I don't get on with it. I don't find it a real funky thing. So I will, again, I'll do a lesson on it, but it's not really um, something that I use a whole lot. And the last one we've got here is a send return. Again, uh, I don't have that uh, option here on this amplifier because I don't have that. That's on the Katana 100. Uh, and it means that you can send the signal out of the amplifier to external effects and then back into the amplifier. Um, any couple of important buttons that I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, we've got a play button down the bottom here where you can actually import audio files and play them out of your amplifier if you want to jam along. There's loads of interesting things you can do there where you're looping it and changing the speed, stuff like that. Uh, we've also got system. Uh, this one's got one thing that is actually really super useful, which is a global EQ, okay? So that's another one of those really powerful tools, particularly if you've got a guitar that's got a particular honk, a particular EQ thing that isn't great, you can edit it out in here, and that's, a, a again, really, really great tool. Um, and of course, we've got here the tone central control, so that'll allow you to connect to the, intro, uh, the internet and access uh, sounds by other people and, and load them directly into your amplifier. Again, very, very powerful little uh, thing to explore there for later on. So I hope that gives you a good overview of the Boss Tone Studio. I know many of you are going to be going like, oh man, you didn't play anything. I wanted to hear some examples of stuff. I'm going to be doing that right now, but I felt like it was really important that you get a good overview of the whole thing and understand how it works with the with the different effects and the different colors and all of that sort of stuff, because that stuff's also really important if you're going to get involved with this. So what I'm going to do now is start breaking it down into one little section at a time and doing a video about each different thing, the EQ, all of the different effects and all of that sort of stuff. At least that's the plan. Hopefully you'll dig all that and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.